The Evil Dead can never die. From the new cast to what the R rating means, here's everything you need to know about Evil Dead Rise. Let's go! Originally, Evil Dead Rise was headed for HBO Max, but a funny thing happened on the way to the streamer. First, David Zaslav decided to emphasize theatrical releases after taking over Warner Bros. Secondly, Deadline reports that when the film's trailer played at the trade show Cine Europe, people ate it up, proving the film was good enough for theaters. So when can we expect to get in line and buy some tickets? Well, we'll get to see Evil Dead Rise hit theaters on April 21, 2023, as announced via Bruce Campbell's Twitter account. The actor also shared a first-look photo of the film, which showed a smiling deadite leering through an apartment's blood-soaked peephole. Interestingly enough, when Evil Dead Rise releases in 2023, it won't be the only horror comedy that month. The flick will be competing against Renfield, which stars Nicholas Holt as Renfield and Nicholas Cage as his master, Dracula. It'll be interesting to see which horror comedy walks away dominant. Now, let's eat. <laughs> Throughout the Evil Dead franchise, there has been one constant. Someone reads an evil book and unleashes the forces of hell. In the first two Evil Dead movies, we watched this horror show play out in a cabin in the middle of nowhere, with a group of young people getting picked off and possessed by sadistic demons. Of course, the big difference between the two films is that the Evil Dead is more or less straight horror, while Evil Dead 2 is much heavier on the comedy. Things get weird in Army of Darkness when franchise hero Ash Williams goes back to the Middle Ages to fight a skeleton army. And in 2013's Evil Dead, things get gorier than ever when a group of friends hole up in a cabin and release the Deadites. But what will Evil Dead Rise be about? Will it follow the standard Evil Dead formula of a cabin in the woods, or will it get a bit more creative a la Army of Darkness? Well, this time the Deadites are headed to Los Angeles, and they plan to unleash havoc on an apartment complex. The official synopsis reads, A road-weary Beth pays an overdue visit to her older sister, Ellie. The sister's reunion is cut short by the discovery of a mysterious book deep in the bowels of Ellie's building, giving rise to flesh-possessing demons and thrusting Beth into a primal battle for survival. In the first three Evil Dead films, the franchise was anchored by the shotgun-toting, chainsaw-wielding Ash Williams, played by the one and only Bruce Campbell. Shop smart. Shop S-smart. You got that? In the 2013 installments, the focus shifted to Mia, played by Jane Levy, a woman struggling with drug addiction who must also face an onslaught from hell when she tries to go cold turkey. So who will be leading Evil Dead Rise? Lily Sullivan will be playing the lead role of Beth, who goes to visit her single mom's sister and finds herself facing an apartment complex full of deadites. You may have seen Sullivan in miniseries like Picnic at Hanging Rock or movies like Mental. Opposite her, Alyssa Sutherland will play Ellie, the mother of three living in the apartment complex, whose life gets even more complicated with the appearance of the flesh-bound Necronomicon. The first three Evil Dead films were famously directed by Sam Raimi, who went from micro-budget filmmaker to mainstream director on the success of this trilogy. The 2013 Evil Dead was helmed by Fede Alvarez, who kept things intense with his two other features, Don't Breathe and The Girl in the Spider's Web. So who's in charge of all the mayhem, murder, and madness this time around? Evil Dead Rise will be directed by Lee Cronin. Sure, he isn't a household name yet, but we have a feeling he will be soon. At the moment, Cronin is just one release film to his name. 2019's uber-creepy The Hole in the Ground. That film follows a single mother in Ireland, who suspects her son might not actually be her boy anymore. Raimi, who's also the executive producer on Evil Dead Rise, was so impressed with Cronin's work that he handpicked him to direct the new Evil Dead film. Speaking with Slash Film, Raimi said, I loved The Hole in the Ground. I thought, this is a really great director. And we met and he talked and he said he really liked The Evil Dead. And I said, then why don't you make the new one? I think you're just the kind of guy I'd like to do it. And that's high praise from the man who conjured The Evil Dead franchise into existence. The two people most closely associated with The Evil Dead franchise are the two who brought the series to life, director Sam Raimi and star Bruce Campbell. Without these titans of horror, we wouldn't have Ash Williams duking it out with undead monsters, sawing off his own possessed hand, or reigning supreme as the king of Esmart. However, neither one will be reprising their original positions for Evil Dead Rise. So will these two be involved with Evil Dead Rise? Fortunately, the answer is yes. Both Raimi and Campbell will be serving as executive producers, along with Robert Tuppert, who's been involved with the franchise since the first film. And Campbell has had nothing but positive things to say about the film, telling Collider, Evil Dead Rise does not suck in the least. Lee Cronin did a great job. It's a very European Evil Dead. 
We're assuming Campbell is referencing European horror sensibilities, although we don't know if he's talking about Italian giallo, French extremity, or some other style. Whatever we're getting, it's sure to be scary. Raimi told Slashfilm, it's terrifying and it's going to knock people's socks off. If you know anything about the Evil Dead series, then you know it's not exactly a PG-rated franchise. The first film scared up the dreaded NC-17, with the subsequent entries all earning an R rating with their severed limbs and geysers of gore. So what will Evil Dead Rise be rated? Will it compare to previous entries, or will it go the route of so many modern movies and play it safe with an audience-friendly PG-13? Well, never fear, deadite diehards. Evil Dead Rise is gonna keep things nasty. According to Fangoria, the 2023 film is officially rated R. How come? As you might expect, Lee Cronin's upcoming movie earned the big bad R due to strong bloody horror violence and gore and some language. Obviously, you can't have an Evil Dead film without delivering on the kills. Well, Army of Darkness isn't exactly the hardest R, but from everything we've heard, it seems likely this one will have more in common with the first two films and Fede Alvarez's installment. If you're at work, watch out! The Red Band trailer for Evil Dead Rise isn't messing around. The trailer begins with possessed mother Ellie cooking the world's worst batch of scrambled eggs and describing a lovely dream where she violently murders a whole family. Clearly, paging to the Necronomicon and playing that old creepy record her kid found was a mistake. It's always a mistake. From there, we watch as scalps get ripped from heads, deadite swallows shards of glass, and our bloodied hero Beth guarding a group of poor kids from their very undead mom. Mom? Mommy's with the maggots now. Yes, that Evil Dead staple, the chainsaw, does make an appearance, promising plenty of severed limbs and arterial sprays. And we're also terrified to see what happens with that cheese grater. When it comes to iconic horror franchises, few are as extensive as The Evil Dead. The series has five movies of varying continuity, a three-season television series, and multiple video games, and an entire three-season television series on stars. You're kind of like a young me. Dead Ice ruined your life and you're hot as hell. Thanks to all this content, the Evil Dead storyline can be a bit confusing for new fans to wrap their head around. The very first Evil Dead movie pits Ash Williams and his friends against other worldly demons while they're stuck in a remote woodland cabin. With Ash as the only survivor, his story continues into the events of Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness, as he slowly and surely becomes a deadite-killing, chainsaw-handed hero. Now, let's talk about how I get back home. Following his time in the Middle Ages during Army of Darkness, Ash spends the next 30 years as a total loser, working at Value Stop before accidentally reading from the Necronomicon once again to initiate the plot of Ash vs. Evil Dead. Now, it's important to understand that the world of Evil Dead Rise is supposedly linked to the original trilogy rather than the 2013 reboot titled Evil Dead. Some key elements are carried over from what came before, however, such as the Necronomicon and the appearance of horrifying deadites. Evil Dead Rise has had a slightly complicated development history, as have many installments in this franchise since its beginnings in 1981. This whole mess started back in 2013, after director Fede Alvarez was given free reign to make his own remake of the original film. Evil Dead reimagines the events of the first movie with an emphasis on realistic gore, nuanced characters, and more modern horror. Additionally, completely new characters are added to the canon including new heroine Mia Allen, although Ash Williams himself does make a small cameo appearance in a post credit scene. Following the release of Evil Dead, Alvarez was slated to make a sequel to his reboot with the backing of Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell. But things stalled as Alvarez found success with his own original Don't Breathe series. The Uruguayan filmmaker even tweeted a poll back in 2018, asking fans which of his big movies had want to see a sequel of, and then expressed his disappointment in the results. He told MovieWeb, When I tweeted that I was interested in seeing what people prefer, unfortunately Evil Dead 2 won which I guess I would have preferred Don't Breathe 2 to win because it's one of my own creations. Obviously, Evil Dead is a bigger following, so that's what happened. It seems he ultimately decided to go his own way, since that proposed sequel morphed into an entirely new spin-off movie now known as Evil Dead Rise, without Alvarez at the helm. There's something special about bloody, gory cult horror movies that get certain types of people frothing at the mouth. Evil Dead has proven to be one of the most popular franchises of its kind, with seemingly endless fans inspired by the way Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell merge the genres of horror and comedy seamlessly together. Indie filmmakers everywhere have cited Evil Dead as a fundamental touchstone of their own desire to make no-budget movies, with some pretty big names in entertainment pointing to Raimi's work as inspiration, such as Peter Jackson and Edgar Wright. Even filmmakers as prestigious as the Coen brothers got their start editing for Sam Raimi on The Evil Dead. At least Joel did, according to the story. 
The filmmaking style of the Evil Dead even left an impact on the Coen's own work, most notably in their films Blood Simple and Raising Arizona. That said, this is a franchise that has consistently produced commercially successful and critically acclaimed content that fans can't get enough of. Overall, the franchise has made over $150 million on a relatively small budget. Furthermore, the films are constantly screened at fan events and around Halloween, which shows just how much people love to see Deadites get cut in half with a chainsaw. The newest installment will no doubt be just as… Groovy.